bell, ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And yet the good thing about new media, YouTube, that sort of thing, as opposed to legacy media, is we can turn on a dime, right? We can turn on a dime because it's very immediate, it's very easy, very, very accessible. It's basically broadcasting to even idiots like me. <laughs> it's like even schmoes like me. Uh, uh, so uh, this, my plans for the day completely changed. I was, I had a video uploaded and ready to go. Actually, two videos uploaded, ready to go today. I'm going to shunt them over till Sat uh, Friday or Saturday now. Well, the one, I was, the main one I was planning putting out. Because I've got to do a news walk video because a really interesting news story dropped this morning. And I think we do need to talk about it. we got so much other news. I did a live stream last night and I spectacularly failed to cover most of the news that I wanted to in, in the detail I wanted to do it so uh, uh, I have to I'm doing it right here now um, but so yeah there's lots and lots of li little news stories and one I would say significant and very interesting news story that we'll be, be getting to uh, before we get into it can you hit the like button that'll be fan dabby double dozy fan dabby double dozy by the way you know the, the new media new media you know when new media has su supplanted uh, uh, legacy media when the BBC becomes a social media platform, which is really what it should be. I mean, they're talking about defunding it, uh, which I think is a good idea because it's just got this awful elitism running all the way through it that sneers at the rest of the country. And they keep saying, but look, we made 40 towers. We're the best ever. Like, dude, that was like a long time ago, right? So uh, uh, they, should be, they should become a social media platform where you, where you can have a national conversation about the programming right there, right? You can leave it right on the platform. You can... You, you can comment on it you can argue about it and you can broadcast yourself through it right just like here on youtube just like on rumble whatever you can broadcast yourself on it uh, and that's how they get get new talent you follow who who is who resonates with the audience right who at that wouldn't that be great yeah and the other great thing that and, and then the other great thing the bbc would would should do is take a section of their of their uh, resources and put it to minority programming that nobody would really pay for. That's when the BBC was freaking great, you know, when you had like, I don't know, whatever boring crap they, they cancelled children's programs for in the 70s. Like, I always hated that, when they cancelled children's programs for the Olympics. I'm like, really? I don't really give a damn. Or, or golf. Oh man, that was the worst. Having your having play school cancelled for golf was annoying. Anyway, I digress. Like, share, subscribe, comment. I, I had no idea how I got into that, uh, that uh, tangent. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Comment's really helpful. Uh, uh, listen, it does confuse the YouTube algorithm. Because YouTube algorithm absolutely hates me. Okay? Absolutely. It's like, wait a minute. Do you think a, a penis can be female? And I'm like, well, no, personally, I don't. But I, if you do, I, I'm not bothered. Whatever you think, babe. No! You must agree. So they hate me. They always, and I can always tell. They turn off the throttling on my account for like three hours a week. If I'm lucky, right? And then you can see my, my, the, the subscribers go, bruh! It's like, it's incredible. It's just incredibly, it's weird, right? It's very, very, very noticeable and very, very weird. So, uh, 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 but also at the same time, if you comment, the algorithm goes, wait a minute, this is engagement. I I, I like engagement. I, I, it's very, it's kind of like, it's kind of like that Star Trek episode where uh, they land on the planet of the sex robots with Harry Mudd, right? <laughs> like, like, and they just get a bunch of twins uh, playing the sex robots. F firstly, if you're stranded on the planet of sex robots, why are you trying to be rescued? I mean, that's just seemed freaking awesome. Uh, uh, but the way they, they, they eventually defeat the, 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 the I won't call them fembots, they're blokes as well. The way they eventually defeat the, uh, uh, the sex robots is by confusing them, by giving two contradictory commandments and it blows their mind. But that's basically what happens when, when you comment on YouTube, right? So if you can do it, like, share, subscribe, comment, fan dabby, double dozy if you're on Rumble, hit the Rumble button, mostly sign up for my Substack, uh, uh, which, you know, I, I, I have been told that the lame have been able to walk. The blind were able to see after signing up for my Substack. Now, of course, Results may vary. Resu res results may vary. Who knows what they're saying. But uh, it's quite good, right? I put out a bunch of comics on it. And uh, Ice Warriors. Ice Warriors is freaking awesome. I'm, I'm coloring it right now. So it's the first time in color. It's really coming out nicely. Like, I'm really happy with it. Uh, uh, so we have Ice Warriors. That goes on Sundays. Another sh uh, strip called Red Ghost. I throw other stuff out there. And also have a paid one. Uh, paid one. We're putting out my new graphic novel on it this month. Crown of the Empire. Uh awesome trailer by 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 problem being which is uh if you're not new to my channel he's gonna be mentioned more than once in this video okay <laughs> and you will see why <laughs>
Fine. Like, share, subscribe, comment, rumble, substack. Everything. We covered everything. Let's get into the news. Uh, so we're going to start with the smaller news stories first. The stories that eh, we don't really care about that much. We're going to start talking about Big Finish. Now, Big Finish... Big Finish have, I think, uh, settled into Big Finish 3.0 now, right? Big Finish 1.0 uh, was fantastic. <laughs> it, was, it went from, I don't know, 99 uh, all the way up until... Uh, I think it would end it ended around 2016, 2017. That, that was Big Finish 1.0, where they were pushing forward the narrative on Doctor Who. They're pushing for Doctor Who in, in new directions. Uh, uh, it was exciting. It was innovative. Uh, and just great stories that like resonated that were were very very uh, uh, authentic to uh, to whatever era they were doing just absolutely authentic. So then they went through uh, Big Finish 2.0 where where they they got onto the uh, the lecturing bandwagon and basically this logo right this logo is the kiss of death for everything because it just means the quality goes down right and it's the weirdest thing because I don't like the uh, the current era. But it kind of just affects everything else. It's like, ugh. So it's when, when this logo arrived, uh, I, you know, I would say the quality really, really took a nosedive as they were much more interested in wagging their finger at you. Might, exactly the same as, as as the TV show. Pretty much exactly for the same reason. They both they all believe the Twitterati are real, right? So uh, so this is Big Finish 3.0. It's not as good as Big Finish 1.0. It really it's not as bad as Big Finish 2.0, but this is Big Finish 3.0. This is a very stereotypical one. Peladon. Peladon, it seems from uh the trailer. I haven't heard it. I'm not buying it. I've been and I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. Uh, um it seems from the trailer, it's kind of like hate science while treat uh, hates religion while treating uh, science as religion, right? So can, ha, basically, it's like this magical savior for all without really understanding it, and like, uh, th th which is kind of common today. Um, but, the, but yeah, you'll notice there are lots and lots of member berries stuffed in there, and there's a surprise one, which is why this is a news story. David Tennant, they got him to record a cameo to put in this. I'm a bit David Tedder down, quite frankly. <laughs> I'll be frank, yeah, like, I, I got enough already. There's a lot of David Tedder, there's a lot of it about, baby. So, like, I'm a bit 10th doctored out because they really, really go into the well a lot on the 10th doctor. Uh, but the reason I'm not buy buying this set is because you, I, I have a theory that the more uh, luxury and lower quality a set is, the more they put in member berries to make you want to buy it which is very much big finish 3.0 the uh peter davison box set 40 came out uh was it last month and, and it, it was what well, it was it was big finish 3.0 full of member berries uh not as good as big finish 1.0 not as bad as 2.0 right so the more member berries in the low low lower the quality and this thing's just pack full of member berries if you bought it, I hope you know. I hope you enjoy it. To me, um, honestly, I, I I think they they worked on. I really I think the political uh, uh, analogy of Peloton really worked on it with the miners' strike and you know joining the EU. Really clever ways of of like looking at these issues. I just doubt the people making this are that clever. Uh, who who wrote it? Right, uh, Jonathan Barnes, Robert Valentine. Jonathan Barnes is good. Lizzie Hopley. I just don't think she's uh, uh, really held to uh, to account that much. Mark Wright, Tim Foley. It might be okay, but they're all they're all. It's a monoculture of like hating anybody who doesn't do, doesn't agree with them, um, which they haven't got, they, which they have not got rid of. Next bit of news. Uh, uh, again, big finish. Uh, to, uh, uh, the the other thing of big finish three point is recasting. Right, they had uh, Fraser Hines did a fantastic turn as a second Doctor. Again, they're so cheap now. They're like 99 cents each, especially the Companion Chronicles, which are really fantastic, right? Um, and so now they've, they've, they've recast uh, uh, the second Doctor with Michael Troughton. It, it looks a different interpretation. I just really like Fraser Hines' one. I, and I don't like this post-war game thing that Fraser in, on the cover looks like he's in his 40s. That which means well they've been traveling for twenty years. I I, I don't know. I like it bothers me, right? It but I don't. I wouldn't mind it like a few. Like if you had two doctors, Jamie, who was uh, uh, if you remember the cliffhanger, it was he's trying to hump Perry, which I like quite frankly uh, one of the sadest things he he's ever done. Uh, uh, he's like, well, Polly's not around. Oh, there's Perry. Um, 
So I I just don't know if it's if it's going to come together. It it, it seems I, I I just don't know if this thing is going to make me want to keep keep buying it. It's the 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 trick of just putting member bearers in to try and sell it. Although it worked though. No. I, I I was going to say I'm not buying Peter Davison's second box set, the forty volume two. And then I saw it's a it's an Alton story written by Tim Foley, who I think is pretty good. I'm like oh. But I kind of want to hear that. And I do like the premise of him being lost in his timeline. It, it, it had a kind of crap uh, two-part story in the first one. I can't remember what it was. It was... Uh, it was the Ice Warrior story, which was uh, uh, about, about stunning and brave feminism. Yay! More stunning and brave feminism. We all need a bit of that. Um, fine. So, yeah. And then moving forward, we have some more, more news about what's coming up. What's happening with the first Doctor Adventures? They are continuing doing things with Dave Bradley, but there is something else they are casting as the first Doctor. Again... I like David. I, I like David Bradley. I like Peter Purvis. I thought he was great. Uh, uh, William Russell. I think he's probably retired now. Um, but uh, 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 I, I, Big Finish 1.0 was the best. You really want to stick with that, right? That 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 was your gold standard. Uh, also, Jody era is apparently coming to Big Finish now. Why on earth would the Jody era be coming to Big Finish? Um, here's what I'm thinking: the Jody era has been detrimental to the cells of Doctor Who. It, it, I, that's what it appears to me from, you know, uh, 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 looking at these things honestly. Um, and I think the more Jody you put into things, the the, the harder they are to sell, right? That's basically what's going on. But there is a very small, uh, I would say, very dedicated group. Although I, I'm not sure if they're, they're, they're going to buy these things, right? So um, the actor who played... Uh, was it? I thought his name was Jellico. Apparently, it's, it's it's Jericho from Doctor Who Flux, the guy from Pir Pirates of the Caribbean. He said at a convention he's in talks with Big Finish to reprise his role to do a six episode mini series, or that sounds like two box sets. Uh, and Nick Briggs has said on the po podcast, uh, the Big Finish podcast, they have approached both Jody and Mandip, and they uh, and they they will be coming soon. So the reason I think they're doing this is because Russell Lee Davis is coming back. Because Russell Lee Davis is coming back. Uh, everything's going to be better, right? They, they, they're going to get over this uh, uh, this commercial slump that I think all of Doctor Who fandom is, well, fandom is of uh, professional Doctor Who merchandising is going through, right? It, um, but yeah, so uh, uh, and I think they're, they're, that's the idea, right? I think if they start bringing out Jodie stuff while Doctor Who's popular again, and they think it will be popular again, which it, which does sound like good news to me, right? If they if they start bringing out Jodie, so it probably uh, won't hurt them, right? They bring it out now, like I don't know. I think I think they would lose viewers, uh, lose listeners, especially as their quality of their product is not as good as it used to be, right? Not as good as it used to be. Uh, um, so the biggest product they've been re they they've really really trumpeted was the Ninth Doctor Adventures, uh, uh, Chris Wakefield's Ninth Doctor Adventures. First box set, freaking awesome, right? Absolutely awesome. The uh, it was a three part story writ written by Nick Briggs, had a companion in it. It just it all worked, right? Second box set were just seemed to be really cheap two handers that were mediocre at best. Third box set, one really great story and two eh, forgettable stories. The Simon story. Really good, right? That was one of the best sideband stories ever, right? I really, really absolutely loved it. And it really, really fits nicely into the, um, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, what's it, the, the feel, the feel of, of, of the Night's nice Doctor. But compared to Night's Doctor, uh, not a fan of Doctor Who. He's like, it was just a job, okay? Leave me alone. How do we know this? Uh, uh, we had this uh, uh, this story came out, was it yesterday, the day before? Chris Michelson takes aim at Doctor Who after uh, to after return sucks the oxen out the air. So we're going to look at the clip this is talking about. Uh, so it starts, they, this is on Lorraine. I've never seen Lorraine. I, thankfully, one, one of the reasons I'm glad I don't live in England. I've never see, uh, uh, seen Lorraine. So it starts off. Um, the, the, she says, uh, speaking to Christopher, address whether he likes talking about his time on Doctor Who or if it's a media invention. Of course, it's a media. He absolutely hates it. <laughs> like that was like that was not a good time of the life for him, right? Uh, media invention. He replied, uh, but but obviously Doctor Who can suck uh, all the oxygen out of the air. Um, fine. So then they talked about why why he's doing this. He says because they asked me to do this. But let's just watch the clip. 
Right? Wouldn't that be the easiest thing? We'll just watch the clip together. Turn the sound up. And we will comment as we go. Uh, or maybe I should turn the clip on. That's probably a good idea. There you go. There you go. Uh, uh, I, I just really, uh, I really wish they would put some money into uh, do, doing a photo session with him, like put, putting him in the leather jacket. And also the other thing I, I am somewhat disappointed about in the uh, Night, Night Doctor Adventures, this is all set before Rose. I think they should have put it between Boomtown and... Uh, uh, Bad Wolf, right? If that was the name of it, Bad Wolf. Yeah, but uh, I think we're at the end of, uh, towards the, the, the end of this first season run, why? Because what is one of the few times that an actor gave a, uh, had an arc to the season, right? And he, the Doctor, you saw him grow within the season, which is one of the reasons I absolutely, uh, you know, adored his portrayal, he, he, even though I was very iffy on it at first. Fine, so let, let's have a look at this quick conversation. It's only a minute long. To see you deprise the role that I think was you were such a good Doctor Who, you're going to do it again but in audio version. That's why I'm in a car park in Acton. <laughs> so, uh, uh, this must be he's about to record the, it was the second or third, it's like something in the second season of uh, of, of Box Set. So, here's his the first, we're going to get a, a bit was it a bit of good news because <laughs> you're on your way to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds tardy. <laughs> yeah, I'm on my I'm I'm on my way. I'm on my way to do the second day of recording an audio adventure by Doctor for a company called Big Finish. And it's written by uh, an excellent writer, Nicholas Briggs, who is also the voice of the Dalek. So this I think is actually very good news. Uh, and that first box set they did was awesome. That I mean I really, really loved it. It's if if you're thinking about getting one, that's really the only one. Same with the War Doctor one, the John Hurt, uh, uh, Nick Briggs did it. It's, that's the one. That's the best one. But hands down the best one. So, so fine, we have confirmation that Nick Briggs is riding, my guess is one box set. Again, I, they're probably doing, doing the same. He'd probably take the first one. Or maybe, like, who knows? We'll, I guess we'll find out. Ah, interesting. You know what, though, Chris, you know the way that Doctor Who, and you can do anything with Doctor Who, and he always mm -hmm. regenerates... He's never gone yeah. back, and I, I don't want to say degenerates because that sounds bad, but he's never gone back. But he could. Or so, I, I, by the way, this does sound like the way Jodie Whittaker thinks about Doctor Who, right? It sounds like, it's like, it's a real, again, if you, it's a, it's a real uh, Karen way of looking at Doctor Who. Uh, 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 I think it's a fair way of describing it. Um, and, and do you reckon she heard this question was influenced by uh, the story of David Tennant coming back? Maybe, who knows? Who knows or dares to dream? She could, he or she, because obviously it's a, it's a girl. Well, but it's so, Jodie. Yeah, you can, you can go back to you. You could pop up. Yeah. Well, could that's what, well, that's what I'm doing at the moment in audio form. Yeah. And, and, I know what you, and I know what you're getting at, Brian, <laughs> but only when hell freezes over. Yeah, it, nothing changes. He's not going, it's never ever happening again okay like like uh no <laughs> there's my i put my thumbnail yesterday when, when i covered the story that him saying there's more chance of seeing william hartnell play the doctor again right than him, him and yes i believe that i believe that to be true as the eagles once said oh god i just lost you oh, it's okay no, it's okay it's all right well, i can still see you i can still hear you and okay. it's gone all funny hasn't it? it's gone all weird that's what happens with Zoom calls. Yeah. Oh. Okay, <laughs> we're going for it the second time. Uh, so yeah, he's never coming back. <laughs> it's like you ever seen, seen Apocalypse Now? There's a bit in it where uh, Apocalypse Now is about about Martin Sheen playing a army assassin going to assassinate uh, um, Marlon Brando in the middle of Vietnam. Right, and then uh, uh, halfway through the mission to get there, he gets a note from the the uh, assassin they sent like a year beforehand, and he sent a note to his wife saying, "Sell the kid, sell the house, sell the dog. I'm never coming back." That's essentially where Christopher Eccleston is. Uh, but of course, he's going back for the audio adventure. So they, I, I've been again box sets two and three, uh, the fantastic sideman story, notwithstanding, forgettable, right? Forgettable. Um, this one's kind of exciting that they got Warren Brown in it, and uh, now I assume, yeah, Warren Brown is playing his unit character. I, I, I assume, or is he playing? It was him who played the gay astronaut husband, wasn't it? And I get, I get zero gaydar, like zero, zero gaydar off him. But okay, whatever. Um, 
in 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 the Jody episode. So the the uh, uh, this at least has a two part story, but it, there's there's a lot of big finish 3.0 things that they can't sort themselves putting in. Uh, in the second story, where the Barryman, uh, which is a two part story, which I like. Amanda Drew uh, voices Commander Jane Wardy. I'm so sick of every military commander being female. Everyone. And it's just ridiculous. The only reason the Brigadier is not played by, by a woman is because you couldn't really get away with it, right? You couldn't really get, get, get away with it. Um, and then they're bringing back Eleanor Lawless from the last older Brigadier story. And she really wasn't very good in that either. Right, but at least it's a two-part story, which I think you might get a little bit more. Uh, and then it, again, it's very female-centric. Uh, it's uh, Sienna Gilroy in the first story plays uh, Adara, a grieving widow, in the first story, Fond Farewell, set on a planet where where the recently deceased attend their own, their own funeral. Not a bad idea. Not about Juliet Stevenson. Also guest stars of Winifred, the funeral parlor story. Like again, this is also a, a relentlessly female. Um, uh, f female orientated, and, and okay, I guess that's just where we are, right? I guess that's where we are. Uh, uh female orientated, and again, I don't know if uh, 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 Warren Brown is playing his gay character or his unit character, which also might be gay for all I know. For uh, uh, uh for all I know, but anyway, I, I think uh, Big Finish is hoping that they can coast along. Waiting for uh, RTD2. Now, what is RTD2 gonna look like? Here is the big story that I got that, that I saw today. Hunky actor uh, Fadi uh, El Sayed is a strong contender to become a very different Doctor Who after impressing BBC producers in spin uh, in, in class spin off. Uh, that's probably why. Well, if he got an audition, I, I think that's why he got an audition. This is an interesting rumor, right? This one I'm really interested in because it's not like a normal rumor. Your normal rumor is who's big on TV in the, at, at right now, and they say, "Well, he must be Doctor or she must be Doctor Who, right?" If they're big, like, if they're in a big show right now on TV, they, like, oh no, yeah, they, yeah, hot, hot contender for Doctor Who. Uh, that's just because the the odds go uh, uh, go down on uh, 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 you know at the book is because they're on TV right now and people think about them. Okay, so let, let's but, let, but this one sounds like it might actually have some legs. Right, this one I put in the same category as the uh, Amari Douglas uh, uh, one, and also it's unexpected. Uh, uh, and, and also, there, there's, before we really get into the story, you might know, think, who is Fady uh, El Sayed? What is it that could have impressed him that Rusty Davis that Rusty Davis saw that really said, uh, you know what, you know what, this is something I would watch. Let's have a quick look. Uh, yes, are you trying to tell me Rusty Davis is going no? That can't be... I can't look at that every day for a few years. That Oh, no. Oh, no. That's going to be awful. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Listen, Rossi Davis is not uh, uh, not not afraid of putting a good-looking guy uh, without a shirt on in his... Uh, in, in what, what, uh, whatever he's done. But anyway, anyway, again... Uh, 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 now, again, I'm not good at, at, at gaydar, at uh, 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 working out who is attractive to who... Um, I, I, I listen. I would check the problem big on this one. I think he's like, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> this one, yeah, that's okay. I, I mean, uh, um, but yeah. <laughs> Famous previous role saw him play a vampire in Penny Dreadful, uh, working alongside uh, Rosamund Pike and Jamie uh, Doran in a private war. I haven't seen in in, in anything. Uh, a soul said fair to be a very different doctor. That site that we said we heard that Ralph Davis will do a very different doctor. Uh, but precisely what, uh, uh, but precisely what the, uh, but precisely what the crazers want, he would also be the most attractive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, listen. To to Turlo in his short shorts is what one thing, but uh, uh, Fady, yeah, I can see him bringing some viewers back. Right, I can totally see that happening. Um, he also featured in the episode of Sky Atlantic's Little Birds as well as three appearances in, in Channel 4's Baghdad Central. Okay. Having impressed uh, uh, Hollywood bo bosses at, at Warner Brothers, uh, he was cast in the upcoming film, DC film Black Adam. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, he's doing well then. However, gave up the role after COVID restrictions preventing him traveling to Atlanta. Oh, man. I am so sorry to hear that, right? I am so sorry to hear that. That bet that was a great role. Oh, man. I feel really bad for him. So now I hope he gets a role even more now. Let's see if they got any. Uh, let's see where this rumor came from. Hunky actor, and I think that's a fair description, okay? Hunky actor, uh, Fadi uh, El Sayed, 
is alleged a strong contender in the race to become the next Doctor Who with Jodie Whittaker quitting later this year. Oh, please. The British Egyptian star 28 caught the attention of producers while starring in BBC's uh, three spin-off class, uh, class spin-off uh, as a high school, uh, high school student Ram Singh. I, I only saw one episode of, uh, of of class and I was like, it's not really for me, right? I didn't really like it. I, I, I like seeing Capaldi in it, right? I saw the website with Capaldi. It was yeah, but okay. Look, I mean, this guy, this guy is on, is doing well. He he must he must be able to bring it. I did like I would not call him a uh, uh, a diversity hire, right? I would I would not say that that that's the case. Uh, a source of the sun. Okay, who's a source? Fed me a very different dog. That's precisely what the creators want. He also would be most. We just heard, said that. According to the uh, publication, he 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 what, what publication? Uh, he once said, "Growing on, t uh, uh, growing up, that was all on TV. I was uh, always aware of Doctor Who, and now I'm a huge fan." Faded previous roles saw him play the vampire and Penny Dread for a long time. Like, is this written for people who's had, who, who've recently received like some kind of head injury? Right? <laughs> that was kind of, you literally just said this, okay? You literally just said this. Um, fine. Uh, this is oh, mad. It's so bizarre. They're just repeating. He's a good-looking dude, man. I, I, he will bring viewers in. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think he can probably do it. Despite the setback, uh, he announced in June 21 he'll be starting in, in uh, Gangs of London's second series. Um, representative for uh, Fadey and the BBC have, contact, uh, uh, have uh, been contacted by the Mail Online. Uh, it comes after producers into the next time Lord will be another woman. They didn't really do that. Uh, production notes from the next series uh, of the sci-fi suggest that female will be yet again starring uh, as it's in Lydia West was hardly uh, tipped to take over it. The Mirror reported. That was a fake production thing, right? That was totally fake. Um, current time, Lord Joe, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Entertainment Industry website production weekly lists uh, episodes as a fantasy saga. Uh, yeah, 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 because it said the word her in that. But again, that was fake. Uh, Lydia's at six to one, and Mari Douglas five to one. Um, um, uh, Lyd uh, Lydia is bookmakers uh, Coral's favourite three to one odds. Uh, Fazaya and Kidi and Amara Douglas. I don't know if Fazaya and uh, and Kindi is. Uh, Mara Douglas is fine. Uh, and uh, Oli Alexander six to one. Well, he keeps saying he's not. Right, that would be a bit. Yeah, okay. Um, Fine. Jolie has uh, said previously that she's leaving the Carpenter role this year. She feels it's a new, it needs a new energy, but the star confesses that she isn't sure she's making the correct decision. You're making the right decision, right, darling? I let, rest assured, you are making the correct decision. Uh, uh, don't, don't hesitate. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. And uh, I don't really think it's entirely your decision. Uh, okay, this is just what this is all just fluff, right? But. I don't know where this rumor came from. I reckon he's a contender. I reckon he's a very, very strong contender. Um, and I we kind of it, it. It's not what I. It's it's what I expect from Russell Davis. In that, it's not what I expect. It's something new, something different. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's. I get, I'm staying. I'm staying optimistic until I see something. That's basically where I am. So the 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 more the more bullcrap rumor is this. Uh, Doctor Jodie Whittaker could be replaced by the responders Martin Freeman. Again, all that's happening is he's on TV right now in this show, and, and people are going to the bookies and laying bets on bets on him, which bring, brings his odds down. Right? Uh, could Martin Freeman be the next doc, uh, next Doctor in the BBC sci-fi series? Whovians have been busy speculating. Um, However, after watching the BBC's drama, The Responder, some fans seem to believe Martin, uh, Martin Freeman will be a good fit in the iconic role. He's a good actor. Uh, uh, would he be a good fit in the role? I don't think so. He doesn't feel like he's got that gravitas to me, right? Uh, I don't... It's, uh, I, um, honestly, I, if I had a choice I, uh, between Martin Freeman and this bloke, I'll go for this bloke, all right? 100%. 100%. And again, and again, all the... Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, my, my entire gay audience, you're welcome. <laughs> Man, we're going to have fun with this guy on the thumbnail. Um, but, uh, 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 yeah, he could do it, but it, just, it doesn't excite me. 
Really? Yeah, it is. Again. Again. Someone excites me. No, not in that way. Not that there's anything wrong with <laughs> that was a that was a quote from Seinfeld. <laughs> Listen, what can I tell you? You you know, you can take the Jew out of New York. You can't take New York out the New York out the Jew. Uh speculating Martin Freeman, uh Connor, I just don't really see it really. Uh Martin is starring as Liverpool probably in Austin, Chris Carlson as a responder. Look, if they're gonna go with somebody like this, I would much rather than go for like somebody like Stephen Graham. Right. Oh, he'll be crazy as a doctor. Uh, and I like I love Stephen Graham. He, 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 I think he's a great, great actor. If you ever seen This Is England, that's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, he plays a sort of villain in that, which has a redemption art. Anyway, Martin Wilson in the gritty police drama hasn't gone unnoticed, and the actress he plays. So again, he's he's not like he's. This is his first rodeo. Uh, as a result, the uh, Martin Wilson replacing Jodie Whittaker have been slashed by bookmakers. Labbrooks, okay. The following, uh, following the success of the respondent, the book is a cut is also from 50 to 1 to just 14 to 1. Yeah, yeah, you're wasting your money, mate. You are totally wasting your money. I don't see that happening. I, I just don't see it, see it going down. Uh, Martin Freeman just leapfrogged uh, just shy of 30 names uh, to replace Jodie Whittaker with Ponson seemingly convinced uh, Doctor Who Chiefs may be considering him for a role. Again, can you see this picture of Jodie Whittaker with, like, like it, it, it's... With her mouth open and like it's such a terrible piece of acting. Like it's a, an amazingly bad piece of acting. Uh fine, it's a sin, Lydia's where, blah 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 blah. Same old crap, same old crap. The Rossley Davis, uh, 2005, uh, 2023, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, uh, final story that we're gonna go and say, uh, comes of course from Bleeding Core. Bleeding Core is uh 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 uh, a garbage tier sides, I would say, <laughs> but they do have into hearing, hearing their takes on things is so, somewhat interesting. Um, Doctor, uh, could David Tennant give us another three doctors for Doctor Who? Um, it's an interesting uh, rumor. So, what he's going to say, we're going to redo Jodie Whittaker's well, last episode of Flux. Was it the last episode where they she had three versions of her? Really, let's take our absolute weakest element right at. Absolute, absolute, most weakest element humanly possible, uh, and cast, uh, yeah, and then triple it, right? Yeah, it's not a good idea. Uh, okay, so David Tennant returning uh, to Doctor Who as the 14th Doctor is a ridiculous rumor, with no, uh, uh, with no providence that uh, that no one should uh, should be taken seriously. Um, I don't think it's going to happen, right? I. I but I can see the logic of it, right? And I can see the logic of it because Jody Wicker's been a disaster, right? I can see the logic of it going down. I, I, uh, I but yeah, and I think that's why he's upset, right? That's why Rich Johnson uh, of uh, Bleed the Court is upset because it's an admission, once again, it's another admission, another sign of the absolute failure. Uh, and they don't care about it being good or bad, or they care about it as being successful when it wasn't. Nevertheless, my my uh, my mindlessly uh, bleeding core cool article that looked at the scene from the 50th anniversary episode Dare the Doctor with Matt Smith and Tom Baker speculating how it could be uh, could say everything has gone viral uh, uh, has gone viral rather. Uh, it's gone viral rather. Uh, yes, because you're talking about Doctor Who. Three days in, and it's still the most read article on the site now that has inspired many TikTok videos. Flooding my feed. I, do I need to get on TikTok? I don't want to get on TikTok. Oh, I don't. Don't make me go on TikTok. Um, but coming up with fan theories is what we do. Yeah, uh, uh, used to be before we got screamed that we were racist for doing it. Do you remember that? It used to be fun doing that. Uh, as long as no one takes them too seriously. That's really the problem. The, the the Jody fans take everything way too seriously. Like way too seriously. Uh, so here's another. During the day of the Doctor, the tenth, eleventh, and more Doctor all met and worked together. Kate and Ephraim Stewart made uh, reference to this uh, present for this. Uh, Nick named it the Chrome Instant, a reference to the three Doctors in 1973, where the first, second, uh, and third Doctors teamed up for the show's tenth anniversary, in which Omega kidnapped the whole of Unit uh, through Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart's insisted. So Brigadier uh, Lethbridge Stewart's insisted. They had not been transported to an alien planet, but the seaside resort of Chroma. 
Uh, uh, he said, nonsense. Uh, I think this is Kroger. Okay, and it probably was. <laughs> That's probably where they filmed it. Um, if Tennant were to return in a, 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 as a separate re regeneration of Doctor, the full thing's Doctor, there may be a way for him to reprise a very uh, reprise this in a very. Uh, there may be a ways a way to. This is written terribly. If Tennant were to return as a separate regeneration of the Doctor, the full thing's Doctor, there may be a way to reprise this in a very different way. With Tennant playing the tenth Doctor, the spin-off hand re uh, regeneration one uh one hearted version of himself living on rosa's earth this is what i said uh recently seen in the comics with a daughter oh god Let's leave uh, uh, jody hauser stop just stop 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 no he doesn't have a daughter uh and then the 14th doctor as well uh these three doctors again all played by the same actor for the show's sixth anniversary in 2023 it's not that again, again. I don't think it was hap it, It's it's going to happen, but I can see why BBC would be licking their bloody lips, right? And Sony would be licking their lips for it. Arguably, that episode always gave, uh, also gave us three doctors. Uh, gave us three doctors anyway. Your if you include the Doctor Donna, uh, but it was a thing. Da uh, uh, David would have to play three versions of the Doctor. Uh, himself, and that would be a fun idea, wouldn't it? Well, listen, I can see that making him being interested in that, right? I totally can see him being interested, in but you know what? I can see much more. You know, what? I can see much more. I can see Russell D. Davis being much more interested in this. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's guy. I'm going to scare them. I, I don't think you're that scared, Russell. I don't think you're that scared. I think you're more uh, uh, somewhat uh, 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 giddy with anticipation <laughs> rather than. Uh, uh, so there you go. Uh, what do I reckon the odds on on Feldy a side? Good. I reckon he's got a good chance, right? If this is, if there's any truth to this rumor, uh, he's pro he was probably on a call sheet for one of the 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 auditions. Um, if there's any truth to the rumor whatsoever, uh, uh, it's that um, was it's good news. It could well be, could well be somebody at Bad Wolf leaked this story to get a feel to see how it will go down. Uh, listen, standing next to Jodie Whittaker, you, it, pretty much anything looks good. You can cast a tub of lard as a doctor, and people be like, well, at least it's better. <laughs> at least it's better. Uh, uh, but, you know, I think Big Finish shows us that just being a bit better isn't really good enough. It's got to be good. It's got to be good. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, listen, uh, he, he, he looks good. I hope he's able to bring whatever Russell wants to bring to role. I like the idea of, it, of Russell doing a younger doctor. That's certainly interesting. I think we did something similar with Matt Smith, but I, I imagine he would play it in a very different way. Anyway, again, so, uh, you know, all on board for this. What do you think? What do you think of uh, 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 Fadi, was it, El Sayad? Like, what do you think? I mean, oh, God, I hope he hasn't got a background of being like, oh, I hate those Jews. Without that, that would be a bit uncomfortable for me, right? That would be a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, 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 you know, so I guess we'll have to find out. My name is Lila Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. <laughs>